Okay, I realize it isn't quite uh, 15 after, but we have to uh, start because uh, we're running out of time to get this one to the server before class. February 01 bar question, Deuce Cody. Deuce and Cody were arrested for armed robbery. Deuce was taken to the police station and she was interrogated without Miranda warning, okay? We've got that. She was interrogated without her Miranda warnings. That means that anything that she says uh, is not admissible against her. After three hours of questioning, a police officer asked Deuce if she would consent to a search of her automobile. Well, okay. If she asks for, if she grants consent to search, and they search the car and find something, that's not a statement, okay, but she more or less identified where materials may be found in violation of Miranda. Uh, and is that going to be admissible? Uh, well, you know, the, the, the answer is probably not, but um, probably not, but the fact is they didn't ask her. They didn't ask about it. The, in any event, they asked for consent to search her car. She consented. Now, this consent might be in violation of due process. Involuntary consent. How do you decide? Same fact as before. The consent needs to be the free and rational choice of the defendant under the totality of the circumstances. Use the same factors for the totality of the circumstances. So was her statement the free and rational choice under the totality of the circumstances? Um, I don't know. Uh, but those are the facts that we use. And let's see, we may not even be asked. Deuce consented and a search of her car revealed a handgun and items stolen in the robbery. Now, uh, if you want to get those items admitted, she, against her, she may claim that her consent was involuntary. She may claim that her consent was, uh, uh, that the interrogation was in violation of Miranda. Uh, and let's keep going. The fact is, you weren't even asked. Okay. Uh, line 10. When told what the officers found, Deuce confessed to driving the getaway car in the robbery. Now, is that confession admissible? Well, I don't know. The police can probably claim inevitable discovery and say they would have discovered these items anyway. We don't know. Let's see what we're asked. But you see the problem so far. She has confessed, is, it, is her confession that she drove a getaway car going to be admissible? Well, it's in violation of Miranda, might be in violation of due process, and so it may not be admissible against her. I don't think it is admissible. Let's go ahead. Line 12. Cody, who did not know that Deuce had confessed, then confessed and named Deuce as the driver of the getaway car. Aha. Uh -huh. So Deuce, Deuce's statement that she drove the getaway car, even though it may not be admissible, uh, Cody uh, claims she drove the getaway car. And Cody is a co-defendant. They were committing the felonies together. And so when you have the admission of a co-felon, the admission the, the two co-felons are treated as though they're acting in, in concert acting for the benefit of each other. So the confession of one is admissible against the other. Like they have an agency or a partnership. Admission of one is admissible against the other. But you have a problem with confrontation. If the two defendants, both of whom were involved in the armed robbery, and one admits against the other, uh, and the one who says the other one did it, 
does not testify, you've got a confrontation clause problem. Because the person who says, if you are defendant one, and defendant two says, you did it, and defendant two does not testify, then how are you going to get, um, how are you going to confront them? Line 15. At their joint trials on a charge of robbery, Deuce moved to exclude her confession from the evidence based solely on a failure, on the failure of police to give her her Miranda warning. Well, that might be a good motion, but let's continue. Based only on that violation, okay, not violation of due process, not involuntary. Okay. Based only on that violation, Miranda, the court granted a motion to exclude her confession. Okay. Good enough. The, by the way, later on, they're going to offer this confession against her to impeach. And statements taken in violation of Miranda can be used to impeach. That's one of the Miranda exceptions. One of the Miranda exceptions is the uh, public safety. Another one is the statements taken in violation of Miranda can be used to impeach. Um, the, uh, the line 19. Deuce uh, also moved to exclude from evidence the handgun and the stolen items seized from her car. Okay, now, she might claim that those items taken from her car were the product of a violation of Miranda and violation of due process coercion because of the long interrogation. But what does she actually claim? What she actually claims is that line 20, she was not aware that she had a right to refuse consent to search. Well, the police don't have to tell her she has a right to refuse consent. So based on what she claims, that's not going to stop the admission of the handgun and the stolen items. If she had claimed involuntariness, maybe. But she didn't claim it, so we won't claim it. So it seems like the items that were found in the in her car will be admissible because all she claimed is I didn't know I could refuse the consent to search. They don't have to tell her that. Continuing, line 21. The prosecutor conceded that the police had no authority to, concert, to search the car absent consent, but asserted that Deuce's consent was obtained without coercion. Uh, well, she didn't even allege coercion. And she might have claimed coercion, she didn't claim that. What she claimed is, I didn't know I could refuse consent. And that's just too bad. New uh, line 22, the court denied the motion, finding that the consent was voluntary. Well, I don't quite see how that issue came up. But it looks like the court decided the consent was voluntary, and you may be asked to litigate that. Let's go on. Line 25. The handgun and the stolen items seized from Deuce's car were then admitted into evidence at the joint trial of Deuce the encoding over the objections of each defendant. Well, the handgun and the seized items should certainly be admissible against Cody because his constitutional rights have not been violated. But can they be admitted against Deuce? Well, uh, she, the court said it was voluntary. She didn't claim it was involuntary. That is, her consent, well, she didn't claim her consent was involuntary. She just claimed, I didn't know I could object. So it looks like they ought to be admissible against Cody and Deuce. But let's continue. Admissible against Cody because none of Cody's rights were violated. Admissible against Deuce because although they might, the material might have been discovered 
as a product of coercion by the police. She didn't really claim that. Let's go ahead. Line 29. At trial, Deuce testified, denying that she drove the getaway car. Whoops. So we're going to be able to admit her statement that happened at line 10, where she confessed to driving the getaway car, because now she's at trial saying, I did not. So it will be admissible to impeach. Her, her statement at line 10, taken in violation of Miranda, will be admissible to impeach. Continuing, uh, at line 29, uh, and she also denied she knew the handgun or stolen items were in the car. Well, she can deny that, that's okay. She testified that she had loaned her car to Cody, okay, on the day of the robbery. In rebuttal, the prosecutor called a police officer who testified over objection to Deuce to the contents of Deuce's confession, well, that's going to be admissible to impeach her only, not to his truth, only to impeach her. We're taken in violation of Miranda. One of the exceptions is to impeach. And also Cody's complete unredacted confession implicating Deuce as the driver of the getaway car. Well, uh, Cody said Deuce drove the getaway car, and uh, Cody's confession against Deuce is admissible. We didn't have any reason to exclude Cody's confession against Deuce. But Deuce saying, I didn't drive the getaway car, she can be impeached. She's now saying, I didn't drive the getaway car, but earlier she said I did. She can be impeached in spite of the Miranda rule. And furthermore, Cody's statement that she drove the getaway car is admissible against Deuce, admissible against Deuce, because there's nothing wrong with the information they got from Cody. Line 35. Assume that in each instance all appropriate constitutional evidence objections were made. Number one, did the court err in admitting the handgun and stolen items seized from Deuce's car against Deuce and Cody. Well, the, uh, the, it says assume that, line 35, says assume that all appropriate constitutional evidentiary objections were made. And um, so, um, did the court err in admitting the items from Deuce's car against Deuce and Cody? Well, admitting the items in the car against Cody is no problem. Admitting them against Deuce, well, it doesn't seem to say that Deuce objected on the basis of involuntariness. And yet it said, because the only thing Deuce said is, I didn't consent. But now, at line 35, they say, assume all appropriate constitutional objections were made. So she should have said it was coerced. The uh, consent was coerced. Well, uh, I would raise the coercion issue, saying that since it said raise all appropriate objections, she should have claimed her consent was coerced, and then I would do the coercion analysis. The question is confusing in that what I just said to you is contradictory. Line 35, they say assume all constitutional objections are made, whereas uh, at line uh, 16, Deuce moved to exclude the handgun and the stolen items, saying she was unaware she could refuse. And the court conceded that the police had no authority to search absent consent, but said the consent was without coercion. So I would, I, I would raise the coercion argument. Item two. So once again, as to item one, can the items from the stolen car 
be admissible against Cody? Yes, no reason to object. Against Deuce, claim that her consent was coerced. Use all the facts that we talked about. So the long, uh, the long uh, interrogation, no Miranda warnings at the interrogation. Uh, we don't know about her age and the experience with the criminal justice system. Uh, the, um, uh, we, we, uh, the other factors are such factors as was there any trickery or did they promise leniency? They didn't do that. Uh, the main thing they did was the long, uh, uh, the long interrogation and the violation of Miranda, which is very important, and argued that that maybe is enough for coercion. Item two. Did the court err in admitting the police officer's testimony about Deuce's confession? No, because of the exception to the Miranda rule. That Miranda, the statements taken in violation of Miranda are admissible to impeach, along with the other exception, the public safety exception. Item three, did the court err in admitting the police officer's testimony about Deuce's, Deuce's about Cody's complete unredacted confession? Well, Cody's confession, I don't see any reason not to admit all of Cody's confession. At line 12, Cody did not know that Deuce had confessed, that doesn't matter, and then confessed and named Deuce as the driver of the getaway car. Well, that's admissible. No reason not to admit that. Okay. So that's how you would analyze uh, that question. You see how uh, criminal procedure questions are, you see the areas which get tested in criminal procedure and the things you are expected to know. Three questions are very helpful in seeing how to use these rules, but you need to be sure to study all the rules. Study the things which the police do outside of court and study the things that happen in court. The stuff is tested, so please be sure to study that. Okay. We are... That's the end of our three questions for tonight, and that is the end of this lecture.